Good morning. I hope you're all well today. We are about to start. We are about to start looking at pop art, in particular Roy Lichtenstein, who was hugely influenced by cartoons. So this is a cracking lesson for if your topic happens to be superheroes, or if you're looking at the 1960s, or if you're just looking at doing something quite interesting in class. I hope you're all well today. I hope you all had a lovely weekend. And we'll get started in a few minutes once I know that everybody's here. Now, I've had a few messages this morning with people slightly panicking about materials. Please, please, please. What I always suggest doesn't mean you have to have, okay? Just because I'm suggesting it doesn't mean you have to do everything. If there's anything in, ever anything that you can't find, just miss out that step. Your, your artwork will still look fantastic. Let's put it that way. Um, so if there's anything on the list that you've not managed to get, please, please, please don't panic. Okay? So don't, don't stress yourselves. So, and as per usual, don't forget to send me the photos of the finished articles. Even if you think it's terrible, please still just send me it just so I can see what it's like. If you want to send me it and you don't want it to be in the folder because you're embarrassed for some silly reason, then just tell me, Mrs Cochran, this is for you to see and you to see only. And I won't post because I think that might be putting a few of you off sending me your artwork. You should be proud though. I guarantee it looks fantastic. Right, so good morning to everybody. I hope you're all well. Let's get cracking. So, this morning, you will need a few things to get started. Now, we're going to do our picture actually in the back to front way because we need to leave... We went funny there. We need to leave part of it to dry before we can put it on. So, we're actually going to do the background before, first, which is a bit strange, really. So, you will need a piece of bubble wrap. If you don't have bubble wrap, don't panic. Just miss out that step. Or if you want to create spots with your fingers, or the other side of your pen or a paintbrush, you can do that instead, but please don't stress out over that bit. So we're gonna do a bit of bubble wrap printing, one of my favorite things to do. So there's a bubble wrap, you'll need some paint, some liquid paint. We've gone very much with the primary colors just because Except Roy Lich- no yellow here. No, no, but we've got yellow paper. Yeah. Thanks for the input. <laughs> we're going with primary colors today just because Roy Lichtenstein does that in most of his, his pictures. Um, but this is your take on it, so you go for whatever colours you want to. Hi Lily, nice to see you. Good morning this morning. Good morning this morning. Hmm. Okay, so we've gone for liquid paint in blue and red. Paint brushes, obviously, you'll need as well. And you'll also need a piece of paper to do your printing onto. Now it's up to you. I've got, we. Alex is going for white. I'm going to try and do it on a, on a colour just for something a bit different today. But obviously, choose your colour wisely. Don't choose the same colour of paper as the colour of your paint. Okay? So you need that. You'll also need for later on, for part two and three of the picture, you'll need some other pieces of coloured paper. Now, these do not need to be full sheets. So read your scrap heap for this. You'll also need some print stick and some scissors. Oh, and nice. ideally... Would you shush? Thank you. I'll tell you about them in a minute. Oh my gosh. You'll also need a black pen to outline things. Pencil and a rubber, which will get rubbed out. So any pencil lines you're rubbing out, you're getting rid of today. So you need a rubber as well. And Alex is chipping away in the background. I think this is now about week 10 of art and I've told him to stop doing that because it stops my train of thought. So yet again, stop talking to me in the background. <laughs> now, an optional extra for the end are little bits of corrugated cardboard. This gives your artwork height, so it makes it look three-dimensional. You do not have to do that part. When I'm in the classroom, I never do this because it's too much of a plaster, okay? Or if you have them, these foamy sticky tabs, which I don't actually know why we have them. Do you know why we've got those? Um, oh. I don't know why we have them, but we have them. So sticky tabs or some cardboard. Good morning, Sam. It's nice to see you virtually. I miss seeing you physically, but it's nice to see you virtually. Right, move back in your seat. Right, should we get cracking? Now, before we get started as well, one thing you might want to think at, I printed this off to you. Now, you're going to be looking at this back to front. I do apologise about that. I want you to think about what your wow word could be. So think about words that you see in comics or superhero see. So things like pow. Pop, kapow, wham, bam. Okay, so think about the actual word you want to use. 
while you're getting on with your artwork this morning. You don't need to stress out too much about that. So this is just a sheet. I'll be back to front for you to see, but just to show you the typeface that they use. So you'll notice that they are number one, bubble letters, so they're not a single line. And number two, well, number two, see if you can spot something else about them and come back to me. So they're bubble letters. Is there something else quite unusual about the way the letters are done? Right, have a wee think about that while you're working. And Alex, you have a wee think about that as well. Right, let's get going with the bubble wrap printing. So I'm going to go for, let's go for some, right. Could you put the paint down, please? Don't just. Right, I'm going to go for blue. So you go for white. What did you decide? White. Right, there's your white paper. Okay. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Right, so what you're going to do first of all is ideally you want your bubble wrap to be slightly bigger than your piece of A4 paper, but you're not going to paint all of the bubble wrap, okay? Think about the shape that you want to have in the background. So it might be an oval, it might be a circle, it might be a perfect square. So you're going to actually paint that shape on your bubble wrap. Oh, no. So grab your brush. And I've gone for blue paint paper, so I'm not going to do blue paint. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do an oval. So I'm going to paint the shape that I want first on my bubble wrap. And I'll hold this up in a second so you can see it. Don't paint right the edges. Let's paint the shape. So I've just gone for a simple oval. Okay. And now I'm going to colour fill that in. As per usual with this, if you want to watch and then go away and do, you can. And I will post this at the end so you can catch up later. Or if you want to pause it, you also can do that. Um, so you're just painting all those bubbles. You're trying to get a nice, even coat. Don't worry about painting them all individually. Sometimes I see the kids paint that one, that one, that one, that one. Just go for it. Just go right round. Um, okay, so you're just giving that a nice, clear coating. Um, and this is going to be a thing called relief painting. Well, you need to take it right to there because that will pick up. You're not starting again, I've not got any more bubble wrap. Just paint right to that edge that you've done. Right, we'll fill in your circle now, or your oval. Your very long oval. Yeah, that's why I hate it. Don't hate it. Really, just just be fine. proud, it's fine. That's the first step, so you'll be surprised. So, sorry, what we're about to do is something called relief printing. That means that you use a texture for this, and you paint, or print, put ink on top of your texture, and then you put the paper on top. You don't put the bubble wrap onto the paper because then when you flatten it down, you're actually pushing all of the relief parts onto the page. So all that would happen is you would end up with just with a red splotch. So what you're now doing is you're putting the paper on top of the bubbles and when you're lightly rubbing it, the paper can't get into those grooves. It can only get the relief sections, which are the bumps. And it picks up those marks. Now you need to work quite quickly with this because the paint will start to dry. It's quite warm in our house today. So you need to work quite fast. So Alex, you need to fill it in right to that edge because that'll still pick up on your print. That part, I wanna keep it right, well that line might still faintly pick up there. Just be aware of that. Cool. Right, I'm just gonna show everyone what to do. Dry it. Try and get the same colour of blue all over. So that dark blue you've got in the middle, try and take that to the outer edge, try and get a, a really opaque circle. Right, I'm just gonna show you what to do next. So you've got your circle, you've colored it all in with the bubbles, same texture all over. As tempting as it is, try not to pop the bubbles because then you'll just become, you'll just have a flat piece of plastic. And you're just gonna lay your piece of paper down. Once it's down, it's down. If you put it down, you think, ah, that's not where I want it to be. Too late, you've picked up the paint. So don't pick up the paper and move it. It's, it's far too late for that. You'll end up with a really bloody image. Now what you're gonna do is just with your hands, just going to rub the top layer of your paper. Try not to stamp, just really give it a nice back rub. Oh, nice back rub. Okay. okay, you happy? Okay. I don't think it'll pick up because it's just a faint line. He's got, he's no, made a mistake. Tried it. And if you've been joining in on our previous lessons, you'll know that Alex doesn't like when he makes mistakes. No, it's, even though mistake, I was stopping, so I don't ugly. Every single week we've done an art lesson, you've had a moment in the middle of it, and then it's actually worked out fine. You just need to have more confidence. Right, so my paper is well and truly stuck to the bubble wrap. You can see it coming through. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel off my paper, and you end up with this. Okay. Now, talking of other lessons. If you're a teacher and you're watching just now, 
this is fantastic for if you're doing fish or if you're doing monsters, you can then decorate that blob, put gobbly eyes on it, draw legs, draw hands. You can turn it into, you know, you can actually cut out the shape of a fish or paint the shape of a fish. Brilliant for if you're doing rainbow fish in class. Lovely. See, blend it even pop up. And you've got a smile on your face. Fantastic. You don't need this again. I'm in the classroom. I do not give every single child one piece of bubble wrap. So what would happen now is everyone around the table would have to do that. Just paint over that blob again with the same colour. And normally what I would do is I'd have a table with red, table with blue, table with yellow, table with green, and the kids choose the colour that they want to do and go to that table. So they're allowed to move around the classroom. So this can now go away, we don't need this anymore. Now, I'm going to show you something that I did just before the lesson started, just because you need to decide at this point if you want to do this or not. I'm going to leave mine plain. I'm not going to do anything with it because I'm going to cut it out. So I'm going to cut out the sheep once it's dry. It's backwards. I know it'll be backwards on the screen. But if you want to do more at this point, and this is what we normally do in the classroom for this bit, is we are around the outer edges now, paint lines. Okay, so if you want to do that, hi Granny. If you want to do that now, you can. Okay, so using the paint that you've got, you can then paint these outer lines. Alex is instantly going okay. So if you don't want to cut out your blob and you want the whole sheet to be your background, what I would love you to do now is paint those stripes. I've done them in a pattern, a two-way pattern, but it's up to you how you do that. So you can then paint your background. Or if you're planning on using a plain piece of paper in the background and you want to cut out your shape with your bubbles, and by the way, I've done mine as an oval, but who's to say that I have to cut it out as an oval? I could actually cut out the shape as a cloud shape now if I want. So if you're planning on cutting out the paper, don't do anything to it. Just leave it to dry. If you want to paint the outer edges like Alex is doing now, you can go and do that. Okay, so that's step 1.5. Now, Lily, you couldn't find bubble wrap this morning, so I'm assuming that you've been sitting watching all this. So I do apologise. You're probably bored out of your box right now. Don't worry about the bubble wrap bit. What you can do to get the dots is either leave it plain, you don't have to have the, the, the spotty background, or get your finger involved and finger dot some dots. Or, I said earlier, when I spoke to you, you could use the bottom end of your paintbrush and just put some dots. They probably, you'll probably find that really, really, really hard to get them in the right position. So you'll find it hard to get them on your column and rows, but don't panic about it. It'll still look really nice. Or you could just, if you're really perfect, which I know that you are, you're very precise, so you could even just paint your dots or colour in your dots with pens. But don't stress yourself. Right, so Alex is just painting those stripes, which is fine. That'll give me time to get ready for step two. Good morning, Ali. Ali's watching. I hope you're well today, my darling. Ali? Yeah. Louise, mummy. Oh. Okay. okay, right, next up, I'm going to put this to dry. I'm going to cut this out in about 10 minutes time. So by then, if I put it in the sunshine, way over at the bottom end of the table, hopefully it'll be dry. Lily, we got a parcel delivered. So got loads of bubble wrap. Brilliant news. Oh, you'll be able to do loads of pictures now. Then. I always save my bubble wrap because I do this quite a lot in the classroom. We do a lot of bubble printing. You do? Yeah. Right, moving on. So we're going to leave that to dry. Right, things are going to get tricky in here. Next up, what we're going to do is we're going to think about our wow word for the middle. Harris, what is it? Mummy's doing her lesson. You were told to go for a walk with Daddy and you chose not to. Do you want something? You can come in and say hello if you want. Harris, yeah, go and get the door and tell me you can come in. He's probably hungry. Again, that's probably why I don't go. Tell him he can come in and get a snack if that's what he wants. Right, so we're going to now think about our wow word. So... I've got this sheet here again that you'll need to use your imagination because I'll be back to front. So think about the word you want to do. I have done pop far, 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 far too much. So I am going to do for my next one. Let's... Is he okay? Doesn't work too much. Doesn't work too much. Okay. So I am going to go for the word. Let's go for pow or boom. Pop. Did anyone spot anything, by the way, about the letters and what they're doing? Overlapping. No one got back to they're overlapping. They're overlapping. There's no spaces in between the letters. So when we design our word today, I want you to think about that. I don't want you to have your any spaces between your letters. You're almost doing an outside shape around the whole three. So what I'm going to do, do first like of all is just pardon. Are you allowed to do it like that? Where it is? Where the boom sign's not touching. Yeah, the boom. Explanation. Oh, you're calling it the right thing. 
Yeah, right, so shushed, shushed, shushed. It's really important that you're quiet right now. Mm -hmm. Right, so let's talk a little bit about letter placement. Now, if you are terrible at doing letters, which none of you are, by the way, but if you still think you are, and if you struggled last week when you did the name insect, I don't know if you remember or not, we had to do double letters for that. And if you're new, if you didn't join in and you don't have a clue what I'm talking about, just watch something really simple. If you are planning on doing a bubble letter and you find it really, really hard, just to try and use your imagination, use your brain to get it right, what I always suggest you do first of all is just write it normally. So if you think about the word bag, okay, we've just written it normally just now. Now the pencil lines are all going to get rubbed out. Then what I do with my pencil is I just go around, I treat that first line as the middle of the letter and I go around twice. I go around the inside and the outside. So I'll show you with the E. And then what happens is the letters actually all join together because it's making it bigger. So see now the E and the B are touching. They get bigger and bigger. And they get bigger and bigger. Okay, so you're just going around that light pencil line you did at the beginning. All the pencil lines are going to get rubbed out in a second. There's your G. And don't forget your boom sign. Alex used to call them when Alex was really little and it's always stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> he used to call them boom signs. It stuck with me forever. So when it comes to doing your word on your nice coloured paper, I want you to think about getting them all so they're touching, so they're overlapping. And if you find that really tricky to do, what I would do is just write your word normally, just, just like you would do if you were doing a line on your daughter. Just write your word normally, in capital letters by the way, and then go around those letters. Now the pencil lines are all going to get rubbed out, so try and, I've drawn really, shh, I've drawn quite hard with my pencil so that you can see it at home, but you at home, when you do this, do this quite lightly. And I'm going to do mine on a coloured bit of paper, so choose your coloured bit of paper and think about the size that you're doing it well and then choose your word that you want to do. Now, it might even be some of these words aren't necessarily in the same length. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they might curve. Alex, would you be quiet in the background? Ask me a question when I'm finished speaking. So think about the direction that you've got later. You've got that one going as a curve. You've got this one actually going up and down. You've got this one which just starts smaller and gets bigger. So think about the way you do your letter. Right, what is it you're saying to me? Yes, of course you can use that. Why don't you just use that bit? There's not a lot that's cut out of it. And where's the sheet so you can copy your word from? Mm -hmm. right. So remember, write it really lightly first. Don't have your letters miles apart from each other. Just write them naturally like you would do in your jotter first. Keep them as capitals. Don't worry about shadows and the outline just now. All I want you to do is just write it lightly just now. And don't forget that all important boom sign. So something like that, which will be back to front here. Okay, so now you're just gonna go around the letters again lightly. Paris no is being grumpy today. He was supposed to go for a walk with Daddy, which normally he loves doing. Day normally he asks to go for walks constantly, but today was the day that he decided that actually, at the last minute, he didn't want him. Mm. So he's so. kicking about in the house so. doing who knows what. It's very quiet, which is nice, isn't it? Yeah. No mirrors oh. shouting and screaming in the background. Right. The rubber is somewhere in that pile. It was all nice and tidy up there and then you started rummaging. I didn't even do that. Well, who did then? It wasn't me. Now you're going to cut this word out. So have it nice and chunky. Don't have it too fiddly. You're actually going to have to now cut that whole thing out. Now you've got a choice to make here. You could either cut it out if you're feeling quite is lazy the right word to use here, that's quite insulting. If you're not feeling as industrious today, 
and you don't want to cut around that whole outline, you could just cut it out as an oval shape. I'll let you away with it, okay? I would do that, if I do that with, if I do this lesson with primary three and four, I would let them cut that out with a bubble. Okay, I wouldn't make them cut out the letters separately. If you're up the school, if you're a P6 or a seven, or a very, very clever and bright primary five, Samuel, then you'll be fine cutting that out. But what I'm saying is don't have any really, really skinny letters. Otherwise you will find that hard to cut out. Okay. So grab your pair of scissors now and cut this out. Actually, take that back. Before you do that, outline it. Outline it with a black permanent pen. If you are working at home, make sure you've got something underneath the table at this point. So outline your letters with your black pen before you cut it out. I know that sounds crazy. You're gonna end up cutting away some of the black line, but you can always strengthen it later. It's because before you cut this out, I'm gonna make you rub out the pencil lines. And if you do this after you cut it out, you're gonna rip it all. So outline your letters now in a black pen before you cut it out. And remember, you have got an option here. You could cut it out just as a bubble. You all right? You need the rubber now. Have you still not found it? It was a dinosaur one. That is maybe moved it. Go to the drawer and get another one. She was over here before she went away. She's maybe been playing with it. It's over there. Don't show it down. And don't worry about doing that whole 3D shading thing on your letters yet, like they do in the comics, because we can do that once it's been cut out. At the minute, all I want you to do is just with a pen, just outline that. You are going to end up disappearing, losing some of your black lines, but it's fine. Don't, whatever you do, don't go over the inside pencil line that you did. Okay, don't do that. And also be really, really careful. So for example, where this P and the O meet, be really, really careful because sometimes when you're working quite fast, your brain doesn't quite click. Don't just go instantly like that with your O and have the letters overlapping. You don't want that. Okay? Right, so what you're gonna now do is you're gonna cut that word out. Now it's totally up to you. As I said, you can cut that out as a full sheet or you can cut it out. So just give me a wee couple of seconds just to cut this out. I need to start making this a little bit more like Blue Peter. Mm -hmm. and having one that I've done already. But then I guess because you're working with me, you need the time to do it anyway, so it's no big deal. You all right? Getting on okay? Yeah, Remember to have those five overlapping. Yeah. No, P's not touching the O, so bring your P further so it's touching. That's the only one that's not overlapping, it's fine. That was not overlapping either. Well, you just need to make your letter slightly wider. Okay. You need to do it again. Just like the week that you did your name insect. You have to have your letters wider. You've made your letters too thin. Okay. I'm just going to cut this out really, really quickly. Cutting out the holes of the letters, you might find that quite tricky in a second. Um, I've got two ways that you can do it. One of them involves using a craft knife, which I want you to do with adult supervision so if you've got mum or dad around just now and they've got a spare five minutes you can shout them and say can you come and watch me while I use this craft knife to get the holes of my letters out or there is a safer way of doing it. I had to cut that out and keep it aside just now my bottom of my boom sign because it's not touching which was a bit silly really I should have had that touching shouldn't I can I glue that back on some of them don't have the touching in this one just cut that out separately. Oh, I never rubbed out my left my pencil before I start cutting out. Silly me, you have, but I've not. So this is what I'm saying: cut, rub it out, rub out your pencil lines first before you cut it out. Otherwise, it becomes a little bit fragile, and chances are you're probably going to rip your paper. Ideally, you're using a sharpie for this as well because the sharpies don't smudge when you lift them. And when you're touching them, when you're cutting them out, the heat from your hands, the sweat from your hands doesn't dilute the ink in a Sharpie. So Sharpies are great for doing graphic design. Um, normal pens, normal felted pens are water soluble, which you might remember if we've ever done pen and ink drawn in class. We haven't done a lesson on that yet, actually. That might be a nice lesson to do. Coming up, maybe do a pen and ink, pen wash lesson. Yeah? yeah? We still want to do portraits, so we can maybe do that. Portraits, no, I never want to do that. 
I hate poetry. <laughs> you don't hate poetry. I can't go. Right, so I've cut out my word. I've, I've lost my bottom of my exclamation mark. And I've just got to get these hollow spaces out. So as I said, you can either cut it out with a craft knife or, and be really careful at this point, do that pinch and snip technique. So just fold the letter where you want it to be. Give it a tiny, tiny wee snip. Get your scissors in there and cut that out. Another thing you can do if your circle is far too fragile and there's absolutely no way you're gonna be able to cut that out to make a hollow shape without absolutely annihilating your word is you could just color in the inside of your letters black. So you've got three options. Use a craft knife, do the pinch snip technique to get the hollow out with your scissors or just color it in black. There you go, three, three choices. So you can cut it out that way. Or you can use a wee craft knife and using a mat underneath here. This might be one for the future. I did tell you to get a craft knife because I knew that would be dangerous. So what you do when you're using a craft knife, always have your hand above you and always pull down towards you, never ever pull up the way. Okay, and you're just gonna slice down that way. Now turn it. And you're turning the paper every time and you're keeping your hands well above the knife. Okay. Now in the classroom I would never ever do this because there'd be too many of you, but I know sometimes it might take a craft knife and then make you come to me and cut out and we do it together. Okay, so we've got that cut out and we've got my O there as well. So that's just done my word to get put on top. By the way, you'll notice I didn't make that spotty on my demonstration that I did yesterday. I did the pop with the dots purely because of the fact that I had paper to dry. <laughs> so if you're catching up later, <laughs> you, if you're catching up later on, you could always use to do your word a piece of dry spotty paper. But that again is an artistic choice that you can only make. Right, so I have got my power word. I have got my spotty background, which... Did you just, I'm going to murder him. You flung that bubble wrap and bit of yellow paper up on top of my wet painting. Uh, <laughs> at least it's dry. Oh yeah, at least it's dry. <laughs> <laughs> right, so you can see how it's start, going to start coming together. So now what I'm going to do is, this is slightly sticky still. So what I'll do while I'm waiting, I'm going to cut it out. I'm just going to be really, really careful. I'm just going to cut this out now, my oval shape. So remember, you had a choice there. You might have painted your background. Alex has painted his background. Right, sweetheart, you need to go over the... That looks excellent, by the way. Stop yeah. rubbing it out now. Yeah. Do the black outline first, then rub it out. Okay? Uh, yeah. Can you use that? There's a thinner one there as well, if you want. Mm -hmm. I'm happy with that one. Right, so I'm cutting out my bubbles, cutting out my bubbles, cutting out my bubbles. They're still a little bit wet because somebody stuck a load of um, <laughs> plastic and um, paper on top of them. No, that would make it dry. I think. Or really? Yeah, I'm actually doing it. Right, get your second bit of paper right now. Let's go for a nice contrasting piece of paper. What colour are you wanting? Just, oh no, you don't need a bit of the background. Black again. Okay, what I'm going to do before I stick that down is I might have some triangles coming out of it. You don't have to do that, that's your decision. But what I might do is just with some crap, scrap paper, crap. or I could <laughs> even on this one okay. before I stuck down my bubbles, I just put some stripes across it. So before you stick down your bubble, think about what else you could have in your background. So I might just have some big long triangles at this point coming out of my cloud burst. Little tip for you by the way, when you cut out one triangle, use that edge to get second. Came up with that yesterday. Saved me a lot of time. Oh. Yeah, so she's cutting them out, the whole thing separately. Right, um, you've not done the black inside of your letters. I know, I'm just uh, making them. Okay. I'm only going to go for about six triangles right now. I need to be careful because I used this. Mm. I really thought that one through. Right, have you got your 
have you done the inside of your letters um, yet? Just about Why are you rubbing them? I mean, not finished. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick these triangles just behind that bubble. So all I'll need now is just a bit of impact. Superhero art work and Roy Lichtenstein and stuff's always about impact. So it's kind of about exaggerating things. Now, when you place this down off the page, there's nothing stopping that coming off the edge of the page. Don't try and keep it contained. Right, cut it out now. Now, are you going to cut it out as a whole or are you going to cut it out as a oval? It's up to you. You don't have to cut, cut the word out like I did. And this is quite behind, by the way. We still at the cutting out stage. So cut the word out as an oval or cut out the letters like Mummy did. Okay. Use those scissors, they're much nicer. It's got really bad hay fever today, aren't you? I'm struggling today. I don't know why, isn't it? It must be the wind. So I apologise for the, the snuffling in the background. Right, L Lily, what do you do if you've done stripes around the bubble? So Alex is at that stage as well. So ignore, don't cut anything out, Lily. Just sit and be patient. So if you've done what Alex has done, just wait for a wee second. What you're going to do is you're then going to stick your pal onto another bit of paper. So just wait two ticks because he's going to have to do the same thing in a second. Yes. So if you cut your word out, mm. hopefully you've cut your word out. I just cut the black part. That's okay. So I'm just trying to speak to Lily just now. So Lily, if you've cut your word out, then that's fine. And just wait a wee tiny minute. Because I'm going to wait until he's done that. Keep going, Lily's waiting on you. Just cut the word out. So that's going to go like that. Right, you've cut your word out. Great, you're ahead of this one. <laughs> he's slow. He's very no, slow is not the right word for it. He's very precise. You better not lose my boom sign dot when you're being statty over there. Right, what you could do as well at this point, if you want to, for extra pizzazz, is with your black pen, is just put a black line round your triangles. Just to give it a bit more preciseness about it. Okay, right, Lily, if you've cut out your word, what I want you to do is stick your word onto, so that's nearly done, that's not going to work because it's the same colour. Stick your word onto another piece of coloured paper just now, just with a print stick, okay? And then what I'm going to get you to do is just cut a bubble around that so you've got a full shape. So stick it onto a piece of paper, one of your pieces of paper, with a bit of glue. Draw the shape that you would like. You maybe want it as a cloud, maybe just want it as an oval. Black outline it and then cut it out. Okay? Hope that made sense. Where's my black pen going? Okay, should I do? This computer. I've seen it on a computer. It's on his iPad, don't see anything. No, not. Hey, have you cut that out? No. Okay. Okay, right, so I've got this now. And I am going to stick that onto my black background. I'm just going to stick this down flat just now. You could make it 3D if you wanted to make 3D by using some of the power ones, but I'm just going to leave that just now. Right, now what I'm going to do, Lily, this is what you're going to, this is what you've just done for me now. You are now going to stick your word that you've just cut out onto your second, uh, a coloured bit of paper. Just some glue. Where's my dot gone? I knew this was going to happen. I can make a new one because I don't know where I cut it off. Okay. Have you seen my dot for my my pouncing? Mm, no. That's on the floor. Okay, right, sorry Lily. You've done that now. Right, stuck it onto here. Okay, so it's stuck onto there. So now what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut that out and that's gonna float on the top of there. So think carefully first of all about the way you want to cut it out. You might just want to cut it as an oval. You might want to cut it out with more triangles going around it, which is what I'm actually going to do now. Or 
or you might just cut out as a full blown bubble. Actually, for speed, I should have just done it as a big bubble. Yeah. So now I'm going to have to cut all that out. Okay, so you're just doing that, and then you're going to cut it out. Now, before you cut it out, you're going to want to outline that in black. So grab your marker again. In fact, for speed, I'm just going to cut this out like that. You're almost done. This is this will be the 3D bit by the way. Cut my stuff out really quickly. Should have just made this a nice oval. rubber. We should have a nicer rubber in the house really shouldn't we? We will. We do. We just don't know what they are. It's just the first one we find after you Whoops. Okay. Now, if it's big you can always just put it a bit. So, if you were Alex, you would now have that to go on there and it would be springing out from the page. That, however, is going to be way too big. It's going to cover up a lot of his bubbles. So I would have to make this a bit smaller. It fits on mine, but not on his. Right, I want you to stick that onto one of your coloured bits of paper now, please. So just take, give it a wee, if it's too big, give it a wee trim. Can you stick that now onto another? No other dot oh, I don't know. Mm. I've made it too big. My word, my let words are too big for my actual artwork. Okay, that'll fit now. That'll fit perfectly. Or I thought I had this one. You can all stick it on there. So basically, now what you're going to do is before you stick this down on there. You're going to have some more cut out triangles coming out from behind your word for more impact, preferably in a colour that you haven't used yet. Mm. So Alex, you need to stick. Have you lost your yellow dot? Yeah, well, we can always cut out a yellow dot. Can you just get going and stick it onto a bit of paper, please? Well, it's probably on the floor. Well, you can easily cut your dot. Don't stress about it. Right, so now what I'm going to do just before I stick that down is I'm just going to cut some more triangles out of a coloured bit of paper that I've not used already just to give it a bit more impact. So again, just go slice, 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 slice. That one's not come off. And then cut across. Should get a lot of triangles for the price of one there. Slice, 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 slice. A lot of triangles for the price of one there. So now what I can do is just glue those kind of coming out of that bubble. Just again by using the base of the glue. I need to be careful here, I've got um, white paper that's, blue paper that's white on the other side. Don't want to stick it down the wrong way. Okay. Done. Excellent, you're happy. <laughs> okay, so just stick all those loads of triangles coming out from behind that. I thought it was a new one, but it's not. Okay, okay but we've cut that out. I'll tell you what, just for speed, just you colour in your inside of your pot. Alex is still, out. Alex is still um, cutting out his word. Cut you, you want to cut out the middle? Oh, you, I meant to. Well, you could just colour it in black, just for speed. So let's just you colour in your layers, because we're going to be here all day for the rest. Oh, okay. Like colour in this pot. Right, so I've got my powdered with triangles coming out of it to give it a bit more impact. 
and I'm either going to hover it on that one or I'm going to hover it on my back one. Um, what I'm going to do before I hover it, however, is I'm going to either put pictures on it or little bits of cardboard. Up to you. Let's just go for the cardboard. We'll see if it's for another day, actually. Okay, so just put a bit of glue where you want them to be. Have them equally spaced. Don't forget about putting one in the middle. Because they're almost just like using little stilts. And the good thing is when you use these, you can actually put two together to get even more height. And then you seem to add a little bit of glue on the other side of them. I just put five on mine. I'm just going to leave it on track. I think it might be. Okay, so you've got a little bit of the bubbles coming through. It's coming off the page. That's higher than it needs to be. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. Now there's loads of different ways of doing this. Like for example, the one that I showed you at the very beginning. So that was last yesterday's one where I just did stripes in the background. And you've got this option as well. So you can paint your background. You can have your bubbles on your letter. Or you can just have your bubbles on the background. Ideally, I would have been my word much, much smaller. I didn't really think that one through, but hey ho, I, it's, it's still looking great. Okay, so I think that it's taken us a good 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed it. It was something a wee bit different. Why have you coloured in the word and not the inside of the letters? You told me to do that. He's coloured in this word, not the inside of his letters. Right, I will post Alex's when he gets it finished. <laughs> if he ever gets it finished. Um, just so you can see how it's coming along. He's basically now just coloured in the pot. You told me to. I said colouring the inside. You said yeah. I said colouring the inside of the letters. The hollows. Um, so, yeah, it'll still work. It still says pop. We can still read it. Um, I'll help him put this together and I'll post the finished example and I can't wait to see when you are all finished. Um, lots of love. Take care. Have a great day. And I'll speak to you later on. Oh, one last thing. I'm still not 100% sure what to do for next week's art lesson. I think we're just going to keep it simple though and it's going to be some sort of drawing lesson. Let me know what you think. What you want to, what you want to draw. Okay, speak to you later.